Um, quick little vlog here early this evening, as this evening being the evening of June 21st, I went to see a, a concert of the Bebop Bounty Big Band. This is a jazz octet that does co covers of music from Cowboy Bebop, um, with footage on screen from the episode, from relevant episodes and that sort of thing. Um, to go along with the show. This is at the Aladdin Theater in Portland. This is on the east side of town. Um, this is another one of the smaller venues, smaller but older venues that I've been to. Um, first thing I'd say is, um, to talk about the venue real quick, um, while the venue has an attached bar and just concessions, I didn't get anything from the bar. As a, uh, but minor little thing, Nothing major, but the minor, minor little thing. Um, all of the smaller venues that I've been to in this past year um, and change have generally had more comfortable seating and better leg room than the, um, well, Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall, and to a certain degree, the Keller, um, which feels weird that the bigger, more prestigious venues in town are the ones with the crappy, like relatively from a legroom standpoint, the crappiest seating for a, a five foot 11 guy. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, and otherwise, uh, that said, like the venue is good. Sound quality was, was solid. Um, it was loud, but on the other hand, it's like a jazz concert, so it's not like the loudness of, say, going to go see Hell's Bells live. They're a, the, the, the ACDC all women cover band. So, like, that's fine. Um, the concert itself was great. The quality performances were solid. There were a few tracks where they had to pipe some of the accompaniment in with it, like the organ portion, for example, from In the Rain. Um... Some songs had an onstage vocalist for them. Um, like for real folk, folk blues, like for um, uh, mushroom hunting, like for uh, the name of the song just escaped, just blurped out of my head. Um, Call Me, Call Me, the song from When Ed Leaves. Um, that, like, the, they had live vocals on stage for that. We didn't get live vocals for In the Rain, though, which is odd. On the one hand, like, the guy who did the vocals for Call Me, Call Me was really solid, did a great job. And similarly for the vocalist for uh, Real Folk Blues, a like, two different vocals with male and female. The thing, and, and like the thing with the rain is, either vocalist would work for this. The version on the episode, um, Dial the Fallen Angels, that's a female vocalist. Vocals on the album version, male vocalist, either one works. Um, could have gone either way. And I would have liked to have had live vocals for that. Uh, a few other things where like uh, the, the organ bit they didn't have or, or any with like any specific organ or piano parts or synth parts as part of this. They didn't have any element of that as part of their set. I mean, now they got knocked at. That's a solid. Um, honestly, I don't think that with the size of the stage of the Aladdin Theater. I don't know how you would have fit a ninth member on there for keyboards. And there aren't enough songs necessarily for a full key to like to justify it, so I get it. On the other hand, like their merch guy knows how to play a sousaphone, and they brought the sousaphone out for um a pumpkin head and for One of the others, another song, which 
I actually I should look up their set list. I should have done this before I started recording the thing, but that's okay. It, we're we're shooting off from the hip here. Um, so hopefully, somebody posted online. All right, in Reddit, this is a post from five months ago. This is the current tour. Uh, so yeah, so they don't, they don't have the full set list of the songs and the vocals. Oh, well, um, that's fine. Um, but like, yeah, there's not enough like songs that have synth to them. Like the, 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 the back hack of the half of the set, the, the, or the, the, the after the intermission is primarily focused on real folk blues parts one and two. Um, there's some additional synth in there as well, particularly stuff leading into Julia's pass it, Julia's death, which also I mentioned has a really solid, like Vangelis blade runner vibe so i having some synth on stage would have helped with that but again not nest like with space concerns and everything else i don't know they have the sousaphone but on the other hand the sousaphone also like for a big chunk of the stuff isn't necessarily very on like is not on stage very much and actually doesn't take up as much space on the words it feels weird saying like oh yes a sousaphone doesn't take up as much space on stage as a um, synthesizer, but in a way it, it doesn't um, in terms of the way to structure the, the sousaphone and come in and out more easily, whereas a synthesizer kind of has to stay set up and remain locked down. Uh, so that's our, our other keyboard or that sort of thing. It probably could, might have been put in the same kit as with the um, uh, xylophone and with some of the percussions like um with some of the uh, additional percussion beyond the standard drum set but again that's neither here nor there minor quibbles otherwise it was a really really solid concert really really well structured set um in terms of like if they were going to put out an album, like this set list that they have, the structure for that fits for how you'd structure the album for this in terms of the way a set, a concert set list or an album um, playlist structure tells a narrative. Here we like the, their set list opens with tracks introducing each of the four members of the Bebop crew. Oh, sorry, um, each of the five members. I should correct myself of the Bebop crew because we have a track. We have, we have the track uh, track introducing um, Spike and Jet from first episode. We have um, a track from Stray Dog Strut introducing Ed. Or sorry, introducing Ein. We have a track introducing uh, introducing Faye, and a track introducing um, finally at the end Ed. And then we have a couple tracks from Ballad of Fallen. Eight. From Bell of Fallen Angels, lead into the intermission, which again fits because that, that's about the midway point of the series. Um, and then back half, we get a bit of stuff from Mushroom Samba and some of the lighter um, Bounty of the Week episodes before leading into Real Folk Blues, uh, parts one and two, a bunch of tracks of that. And then as a Encore, we have What Planet Is This from the Cowboy Bebop movie, which is a really good song to do for an encore because that that song is long, or that, that track is long. Um, it's intercut with different parts from the movie rather than like playing over the scene that it's used for. Because honestly, you, you could fit it or just, just play that scene straight and it'd work because that's a... They put it over the dogfight and the crop dusting of or the launching of the crop dusters with the cure for the nanovirus. 
our vaccine for the night virus serum I think serum serum is the correct term for what that would actually is and in the movie really solid sequence in the concert they said they intercut it with footage from other from the movie and also from parts of the television series i feel like if this is like the, the sole representation of the film in the set list like then this focusing on the film here would work because there's plenty of good bits there in the middle of the from the film that you could intercut and interweave throughout the song and within its ebbs and flows. Uh, again, this is also what I mentioned. Again, I sh it seems self-explanatory, but it's very stressing. This is a jazz concert with the degree of, with a certain degree of freeformness and improvisation based around this. They will have a struck they will adjust the structure of the pieces from say the album version of the version of the episode and even in some instances like adjust them to fit the music that is or the, the footage that is on screen in the way that with uh i get a name space be charlie parker i think did elevator to the gallows Miles Davis, my bad. Miles, we Miles Davis did with his soundtrack of the Gallows, where in that film they put on the, the basically the, the film had been shot, and then Miles Davis got his like watched it once, put some notes together, and then like watched it this separately from his um, the rest of his band, then brought them all in, he'd given them some notes, and they started playing along with the movie based on Miles's um, notes in terms of the way the stru film structure was and the way that the he felt the music should go to reflect the narrative of the film in the same way here with the some of the tracks they will make some adjustments to how the performance is to fit with the accompaniment of the footage on screen so for example with when they do the um gun sword standoff in bell to fallen angels there is a few music specific beats that they toss in there that aren't in the album version or in the version of the episode to fit in with that. Uh, and they generally do a good job of also like that generally, that, that, that generally is the wrong job. They also across the board do a really good job of keeping the, like, well, there's plenty of banter and sort of give antics on stage and that sort of thing, keeping the tone to fit to fit with what's on screen um like once we start getting into real folk blues parts one and two and the music and material from there like the tone of the music as much as the same with the tone of the music becomes a bit, a bit more serious and less lighthearted. then with it also like the Stuff, the performance on stage becomes a bit more kind of focused and um on and, and let whereas like they're still like having the music and the footage play off with each other with really interesting ways but it's that there's no like no sense of jokiness necessarily to it because we're you're, we're building up to spike staff and when that moment comes because it is a silent scene or there's a scene without music in the series the same way it is it is they let just music stops you let it play out and then we get set up for the encore um after that in all this was a really good concert um they have as of this recording a couple shows in washington state seattle and spokane and then there's gonna be a bit of a break and then in september they are playing a couple several shows in new york and in the south so if you are on the east coast and you have not seen them play live you may have time to get tickets this is the rare opportunity that i have to do that i'm not going to get a chance to say this when i do my post-concert vlog from when i see electric light orchestra later so this is me taking the opportunity to say, if you have a chance to see the Bebop Bounty Big Band live, even though technically they're not exactly a big band because they're an octet, but whatever, 
the Bebop Bounty Big Band has a better ring to it. Take a chance to go see them. You will, especially if you are a fan of jazz or a fan of Cowboy Bebop, and ideally you're a fan of both, you will have a good time at this show. See you, Space Cowboy. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.